Hey guys, we have learned a lot of exponent laws the last few days, so we're just going to summarize them in this graphic organizer. It can be hard to keep all of these exponent laws straight. One thing I have found that is helpful is to think about order of operations or PEMDAS. Remember, these is this is the order in which you solve a mathematical expression, and it still kind of applies to exponent laws. So if you write out PEMDAS like this, P-E-M-D-A-S, then it kind of helps you remember the main exponent rules. So if your exponents are separated by parentheses, then you're going to multiply the exponents. So that would be something like x squared to the third. You would end up doing x to the two times three and get x to the sixth. And then if your exponents are separated by multiplication, then we will add the exponents. So if you have x to the second times x to the third, that would end up being x to the two times three. And then lastly, if your exponents are separated by division, then you are going to subtract the exponents. So that would be something like x to the third divided by x to the second, and you would end up doing x to the three minus two. So those are the general rules, and if you get stuck, then it can be helpful to write out your order of operations like this, and that will help you figure out what the rules are. You can also write out the expression in expanded form, and that can help you see what the rules are too. So let's go over all these rules that we've learned. The first was the product rule. That was when we multiplied like bases, we could add their exponents. So on number one, I have x to the fifth times x to the twelfth. I am multiplying the bases, so I'm going to add the exponents, and I end up with x to the 17th. Okay, on this next one, I have a little bit more to multiply. We will use the product rule, add the exponents for the variables, but negative 3 times 11, I'm still going to multiply that, and I get negative 33. And then x to the third times x to the fourth, that would be x to the 3 plus 4, which is x to the 7th. And then y times y would be y to the 1 plus 1, so y squared. Okay, power rule is when we are separated by parentheses. When I have a power to a power, I am going to multiply those exponents. So that's what we see here. I'm just going to distribute that 2, and that would end up being y to the 6 times 2, which is y to the 12th. Okay, then on number four, I'm going to do the power rule here first, and then I will multiply with the product rule. So let's start with the power rule, x to the three times three, or x to the third raised to the third, would be x to the three times three, so x to the ninth. And then times four x to the fourth. Now I'm gonna simplify this with the product rule. Four, it's gonna multiply with that invisible one, so it'll be four still. And then x to the ninth times x to the fourth, 9 plus 4 is 13. Okay, when I have a power of a product, I still do the power rule. I just distribute out that exponent. So let's practice that on number 5. I'm going to do negative 2 to the third which ends up being negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And as we know, a negative number raised to an odd exponent results in a negative answer. And then n to the 4th to the 3rd, 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, number six, I need to distribute this exponent to everything. So negative seven squared is negative seven times negative seven, so positive 49. And as we know, a negative to an even exponent becomes positive. And then x to the sixth squared, six times two is 12. And then y to the fifth squared would be y to the 10th. Okay, so those are the multiplication exponent rules. Now let's look at the quotient rule. So if we are dividing the bases, then we subtract the exponents. So let's look at number seven. I still need to simplify the numbers like normal, 28 over 49. Those are both divisible by seven, so that simplifies to four sevenths. And then x to the sixth divided by x squared 
that would be x to the 6 minus 2 or x to the 4th. So you can leave it like that or you can set up your fraction template. 4 and x to the 4th go in the numerator and 7 would go in the denominator. Okay, number 8. Just need to simplify each part separately. So 39 divided by 3 is 13 a to the fourth divided by a squared, four minus two is two. The b to the third does not have any other b to simplify with, so that's gonna remain b to the third. And then c squared divided by c would be like c to the two minus one, which is c to the one or just c. Okay, now let's combine a couple of things that we did. So if you have the power of a quotient, if you have a fraction or a division problem raised to an exponent, you distribute out that exponent, then we will do the quotient rule. So let's practice that on number nine. I need to distribute this five exponent to the numerator and the denominator. And x to the sixth to the fifth becomes x, or sorry, a to the sixth to the fifth becomes a to the 30th, and then a to the fourth to the fifth becomes a to the 20th. And now I do the quotient rule, I subtract those exponents and I get a to the 10th. Okay, same thing on number 10, I'm gonna distribute that two exponent to everything in the numerator and the denominator, then I will do the quotient rule. So x squared to the second becomes x to the fourth, and then y to the fourth squared becomes y to the eighth, 3 squared is 9, x squared is x squared, y to the third squared is y to the sixth, and then z squared is z squared. Okay, so now I'm just going to do the quotient rule to simplify this. My numerical coefficient is going to be 1 ninth. And then x to the fourth divided by x to the second, four minus two is two. And then y to the eighth divided by y to the sixth, eight minus six is two. And then z to the second, it's in the denominator. Um, so it'll be z to the negative second. It's not z to the positive second because it's not in the numerator. And now I'm just going to write my fraction template and I'll rearrange this. So the 1 ninth, there's a 9 in the numerator. I will put a 1 in the numerator if I end up with nothing else. So 9 in the denominator, x to the second and y to the second both have positive exponents, so those go in the numerator. And then the z to the negative second goes to the denominator with a positive exponent. Okay, remember anything to the zero exponent is 1. So let's look at number 11. I need to distribute this exponent first and I get x to the eighth over x to the eighth, and if we do the quotient rule, that ends up being x to the zero, because eight minus eight is zero, so I get one. Okay, number 12, 10 squared is 100, and then I have x to the third, y to the zero, we know that simplifies out to one, and then I get z. All right, and lastly, negative exponents. Remember, negative exponents just mean reciprocal, so I will move it to the denominator and make it positive if it was in the numerator. And if it was in the denominator, then I will move it to the numerator and make it positive. So let's look at number 13. I see a negative exponent and I don't have to simplify anything, so I'm just gonna set up my fraction template. That negative 12 goes in the numerator because it does not have a negative exponent. But the x to the negative second, that needs to go to the denominator with a positive exponent since it originally had a negative exponent. Okay, and number 14, I see negative exponents, but I also see some simplifying that I need to do first. So I'm gonna take care of the simplifying first. Six over 18. Those are both divisible by six, so that simplifies to one third. And then x to the fifth divided by x to the second, 
five minus two is three. And then negative two divided, or y to the negative two divided by y to the seventh. That would be y to the negative two minus seven. So y to the negative ninth. And then z divided by z to the negative ninth. That's like z to the one minus negative nine or z to the one plus nine, so it becomes z to the 10th. Okay, now I've done the quotient rule, so I just need to simplify these negative exponents. So I'm gonna set up my fraction template. One third means I'm gonna have a three in the denominator. I'm not gonna put a one yet, I will at the end if I don't have anything else in the numerator, but it looks like the x to the third is gonna go in the numerator since that has a positive exponent y to the negative ninth, that will go to the denominator with a positive exponent, and then z to the tenth was positive, so it stays in the numerator.